This is always a humorous story because I was actually born in Manhattan and uh, my dad was a doctor down in the city and we had like so many people we had a summer home up here. Uh, my parents bought property in South Londonderry back in 1950 and we spent all of our free time up here you know learned to ski at Stratton when they were opening and um, just always loved this uh, environment. I worked on this particular farm, Taylor Farm, uh, as a teenager. Came here in 1975 and just uh, really embraced the whole li farming lifestyle and uh, went off to college. But when I graduated from college, I came back, ultimately took the farm over, um, continued with the dairy operation, but got into cheese making and our little uh, retail shop that you see here. My dad was a, a doctor, as I said, and a caregiver to others. In another sense, I feel that I am also a caregiver to others. I provide food uh, and, uh, you know, a friendly atmosphere for the people around me. So in that sense, uh, what he did for a living certainly impacted me and influenced, influenced my life. Well, a quick overview of the farm. It, it has been a working dairy farm uh, for many, many years. A family named Amidons were here uh, prior to me. They came here in 1940 and farmed here until uh, the early 80s. And then uh, I continued on with the dairy farm venue, but recognized that the dairy itself wasn't going to sustain us. Uh, so again, as I said, we just kind of capitalized on the tourism element. We, I had, uh, have always had draft horses, and so we developed a sleigh ride business, which has become a real winter uh, signature of the farm here. We do have thousands of guests through the farm um, on sleigh rides. We have a very bucolic scene around the farm, through the pastures, into the woods. We have a little campfire up back and serve hot cider and uh, marshmallows up there. And um, We uh, added this retail shop uh, to augment our cheese business uh, about six years ago, and that uh, has fit in very nicely with uh, the activities of the farm and the, and the draw that we have for the, the public here. My hope is that uh, in the near future, we can actually expand this uh, segment of the business and have uh, a little more of an educational component with it, as well as focusing on good local foods uh, and local artisans. Uh, we have a number of uh, local artists here that provide paintings and photography and uh, ceramics and blown glass and things like that, which really help to embellish the shop. Um, so that's all part of the web we weave to keep this farm a part of the community. I, I really have a strong commitment to this area and to maintaining an agricultural base here. I think, you know, it's so easy to lose farms in the state and throughout the country. And once they're gone, uh, you know, they're very rare that land returns back to agriculture. We are the last of two working dairy farms in this immediate area and uh, uh, when I was young there were 15 farms here so I just I think it's important for our future generations to see food produced on a local level. We aren't going to feed the world here but we can have a significant impact on feeding our local community and I really uh, that means a lot to me so um, that's all part of what we are as as farmers here we we welcome encourage people to come and enjoy the farm and and support us and um, hope to be here for many many years to come I started working on the farm in 75 uh, went off to college in the mid 80s uh, returned here in 89, uh, working as a tenant farmer for the Taylor family who owned the property, uh, and then had the opportunity to buy a portion of the property in 98. 
and that was also uh, when we started our cheese making business. So a lot of things kind of fell into place um, all at that critical time for us. We were dairy farmers. I, I loved the uh, farming aspect of it and working with the animals, working with the land. Um, but uh, as was typical throughout the 80s and 90s, these small, particularly these hillside farms in Vermont, were just not uh, able to compete in the marketplace. So we had to look for a niche market that would help us to make the farm more sustainable. Um, we had to take our product, which was milk, and convert it into something and add value to it. Uh, and there are various options with that. We could have gone to fluid milk or yogurt or ice cream or things like that. We chose cheese because it's um, relatively uh, non-perishable, has a good shelf life. Uh, the cheese that we make can be sold over a a long period of time, and uh, so that was that was what steered us in that direction. Any type of animal-based agriculture is 24/7. We milk our cows year-round, uh, twice a day, every day of the year. Um, typically, make cheese at least three times a week: Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's very demanding. Um, you the the plus side of that is that we have a relatively uh, stable, consistent cash flow. And we can weather uh, you know, fluctuations in the market or, or bad weather patterns or things like that. Uh, crop farming or uh, vegetable farming uh, is not as demanding because it's seasonal. You get a, a downtime. Uh, but all of your income is dependent on that very short window of opportunity. If you have a bad growing season, as we did last summer, with a lot of rain, a lot of difficulties, it impacts your total yearly cash flow and income. So uh, there are pluses and minuses to everything. I personally am a animal person, and I like dealing with the animals. Uh, I like growing things as well, but uh, the dairy farm basically, I would say, suits my personality. Uh, there's a lot that's exciting. Uh, I think what comes to my mind instantly is the people, uh, both my employees who work with me and the people who come to visit the farm. Uh, because of this lifestyle, we're fairly uh, restricted to, you know, working on this property, and I don't get a chance to travel much. But literally, the world comes to my doorstep. We have people from all over. Uh, we've had people from Japan, China, England, Germany, Holland, um, Canada, um, and I really enjoy. I enjoy everybody, and I enjoy interacting with people. Uh, not all dairy farmers are like that. Uh, oftentimes, farmers tend to be a little bit reclusive, and uh, so this isn't necessarily the right fit for everybody. But um, I really enjoy the, the, that's the exciting thing for me, is the, the people. I was sure surprised when my barn collapsed. Um, there have been some tough surprises. It, it is, um, I didn't realize how difficult it would be uh, financially to put all the pieces together. You have an animal element, you have a people element with your employees, you have the food production element, you have sales and marketing, and uh, it all sort of grew around me slowly and gradually, and all of a sudden, surprise, here we are with this really significant business that I'm responsible for. And um, it's wonderful, and I'm thrilled to be doing it. But it isn't necessarily exactly what I envisioned 20 some odd years ago when I started milking 15 cows here. Um, so the surprises are the changes that evolve over time. We're constantly playing with the cheese, trying to 
learn about it, improve it. It's um, you have to love the end result in order to make a good product, and we certainly we know what we like, and we we strive for that all the time. Um, it is uh, a very sort of uh, interesting product to work with because you have so many variables. You have the the cows, the health of the cows, the pasture they're grazing on, the quality of the milk they produce, the experience of uh, working with that milk and making a particular batch of cheese, aging that cheese out, and then uh, getting to the you know actual tasting of the end product. So it's uh, it's a constant learning process, and uh, we have. Uh, within our own business, we make about six different varieties of cheese. Our maple smoked Gouda is probably the cheese that we're best known for, but we have a garlic uh, Gouda and Chipotle Gouda, and uh, we've played with horseradish. So it's a you know something that you can always be adding to and embellishing. And then you know just to comment on the whole Vermont experience, when we started making cheese about. Uh, 12 years ago, there were 12 cheesemakers in the state. There are now almost 50 of these um, small artisanal cheesemakers throughout the state. And, um, and they all produce a number of different varieties of cheese. So it's, a, it's an exciting, now I'm starting to ramble a little bit, but it's a really exciting uh, process, not only for ourselves and our own business, but to watch the state evolve as this sort of mecca for uh, high quality foods, artisanal cheeses, wonderful baked goods, incredible beers. Um, you know, it's really, Vermont is just a wonderful, wonderful place to be taking part in this kind of endeavor. I would say my favorites vary from batch to batch, actually. I, I personally really like our traditional cheese and the red wax. It's a very mild, uh, creamy, cheese, but the flavor really develops over time. We take that cheese, typically we sell it at about two or three months of age, and it's a wonderful mild cheese, but we can take that very same product and age it out for a year and have a dramatically different style of cheese. It almost becomes a, a Parmesan style of cheese, much harder, drier, more like a grating cheese, um, and that's a, a signature cheese as well. We make very limited batches of the aged uh, Gouda and when it's available it goes very quickly but I would say that the uh, the traditional is my favorite partly because it embodies so many different styles and and tastes and textures. I did a, um, a uh, uh, an aged Gouda that we rubbed with beer and I just thought it was going to be outstanding and I'm still going to mess around with it because I think the potential is there but the end result that we ended up with was terrible and uh, the pigs ended up eating it so yeah there are definitely um, experiments that go awry uh, we did a horseradish cheese that um, initially didn't work very well after some tweaking we got it down to a, a pretty good recipe uh, and that's part of the beauty of it. You know, you just, uh, you find what works here. The cheese that we produce here is very unique to this farm. It's unique to our cows and our type of milk, uh, the land base that we have here. So, um, you know, a, a cheesemaker could take our recipe and make it in uh, New Zealand and have a very remarkably different cheese, even though they were following the same same format. Well, there have been a lot of um, wonderful times, memorable moments. Um, probably one of the things that comes to mind uh, immediately is we won a, a first place award with the American Cheese Society. Actually won two first place awards for our maple smoked Gouda. And uh, that was just a real, that's a national competition. Um, and all of our cheeses have won awards at different times but uh, first time that we had won a actual first place award. 
and that was just very, very special. Um, but there are lots of little things that uh, go on on a daily basis, you know, that bring a smile to my face. There was uh, my youngest daughter, Leah, has um, helped with the cheese making at different times, and she was actually quite uh, knowledgeable about the cheese making and that was really fun for me to have a family member that was so inspired um, you know not necessarily related to the the cheese itself but my daughter Molly uh, has helped a lot with the farm work and helps with the haying during the summertime so those things are just uh, you know you can't really even put a, a price tag on those things but uh, they're numerous little things you know a customer just coming in and acknowledging how much they like the, the cheese or, or just coming in and acknowledging how much they like the experience here at the farm. We get you know, numerous emails and little postcards from people who say that they stopped at the farm and it was the highlight of their trip to Vermont. And uh, that just you know, is, it means so much to me. We uh, constructed a big dairy barn in uh, 2006, and that barn collapsed not only once, but actually twice under very similar circumstances. Uh, heavy snow load and high winds, and the structure just wasn't able to um, withstand it. So that was by far the worst day probably of my life, um, but still, um, you know, despite that experience, so much to be thankful for because uh, my friends and the community really rallied around me and uh, were supportive. Um, and we have gone on to reconstruct the barn yet again. It is up and fully functional and uh, better than it ever was before. Um, so, uh, you know, you learn a lot about uh, humility through these experiences, um, but you really learn who your friends are as well. And um, so despite the bad, we're still here and uh, very optimistic and, and forging ahead. Boy, that could be embarrassing. I'm trying to think of what my <laughs> least offensive pleasure is. Uh, I mean, alcohol is... Uh, it's uh, certainly in there, but um, um, oh, what is my, I mean, God, you know, I love Twizzlers are what come to mind. It's like I'm embarrassed to even say that, but I love, yeah, I could, I could say that as well, just to redeem myself a little bit. My sister Mimi bakes wonderful chocolate chip cookies, which we have here in the shop, and I have at least a cookie or two a day, without doubt. But, uh, you know, probably the most sinful thing I have is a Twizzler. Well, certainly it would have to be incorporate Gouda. I, I'm kind of going to go with a, a Gouda fondue that we make. Uh, we make a fondue with beer. In fact, we're going to um, do it at the Men Who Cook up at Stratton. Um, and uh, it's, you know, you dip sausage and broccoli and apples and chunks of bread and so you get to indulge in all these various wonderful food and you use the, the gouda as the basis for all of it so yeah I'd go with that everything locally has been fun for various reasons one, maybe one of the most exquisite meals I had was uh, at Verde's up on uh, the base of Stratton Mountain uh, when uh, Rogan Lechtaller was a chef there. And uh, I had a, a lamb dish that I will just probably never forget. And it was just the whole atmosphere was so beautiful. You know, that was part of it. We were looking out on the mountain and the snow was coming down and a group of friends. And so that was a very, very special time. Um, but uh, oh, wonderful meals all over. I had, uh, you know, I've had just some super fun times at the Perfect Wife. You know, having bar food at their in their pub or Red Fox Inn. Uh, but uh, fine dining, uh, 
three o'clock in. I don't know if you ever ate there when they were in operation. I haven't been to Solo, which is the new uh, restaurant there, but I look forward to trying that. Um, this area, we are so blessed with good food around here. And the real uh, chefs are really interested in using local foods. We Our cheeses are almost everywhere you go from, uh, you know, the, the low-end quick meals to uh, the fine dining. It's really, it's a privilege to work here and eat here. There are just some wonderful, uh, very talented cheesemakers here in Vermont. Uh, Mark Fisher, who owns Woodcock Farm right up the road from us, um, does some exquisite cheeses. Uh, one of my favorites from a little further up north Vermont uh, is uh, Boucher Blue, which is a blue cheese that is wonderful. Um, you know, I, I can hardly list anybody with that for fear of excluding somebody because all of these cheesemakers have really made it a passion. Uh, Taryn Taste from uh, Springbrook Farm, um, you know, on and on and on. And even uh, the larger producers make wonderful cheeses. We, we try to have our little cheese shop here has, I always say, rising tide floats all boats. We try to carry every cheesemaker that that uh, wants to be a part of what we're doing. We have a wonderful selection here. Uh, but as I was starting to say, some of the larger producers like Grafton has uh, outstanding cheddars that, you know, just Vermont is, as I said earlier, a mecca for, for food and particularly for cheeses. I'm totally shooting from the hip here, but I think Historically, communities were so small that, you know, they shared in local square dances and potluck suppers and, uh, you know, there may have been a small local newspaper that really, it was relatively easy for people to stay engaged and involved in their communities. Our communities have become larger and more fast-paced and, and we're thinking more uh, on a global basis. So I think it's very important to have something like GNA TV that um, can really disseminate information about like what we're doing here, that so many people drive by this farm day in and day out and may say, oh, you know what, I'm going to stop there someday. Well, now you guys have just provided an opportunity to enlighten my community to uh, what we do. And my community has just become not only the little town of Londonderry, but, you know, Weston and Manchester and Jamaica. And it, it's greatly expanded uh, my outreach through your efforts. And, uh, and it's made it easy for people to learn about and, and access this information. So, um, you know, I think it, it potentially could be a wonderful source that people would turn to on a very routine basis uh, to gain information about this wonderful community that we live in.